Hi, I'm Carolyn Chen, Chair of the Public and Cultural Programs Advisory Committee for the American Library Association. Hi, I'm Daniel Tutt. I'm the Outreach Director of Unity Productions Foundation. So, Daniel, can you tell me about Unity and what its mission is? So, Unity Productions Foundation is a nonprofit media filmmaking organization that has actually been working, uh, making documentary films for the past 11 years. And really what our mission is, is to work through the media to help promote peace, promote peaceful relations across religions, uh, with a particular focus on the religion of Islam. Uh, our founders, Michael Wolf and Alex Gronemer, recognize that there's a major gap in film and television programming, and that is the Muslim and Islamic experience. You know, for the past 12 plus years, we've been intimately involved with Muslim lands, foreign policy, and the, the vast majority of symbols and messages and ideas that Americans receive about the Islamic experiences through the prism of politics and often violence. So what we're trying to do is offer humanizing stories about Muslims in history and in contemporary society. Great. What subjects do your media productions address? So primarily we're focusing on stories that are either large historical sweeping documentaries. So we did a 600 year look at uh, Al-Andalus, the experience of Islam in Spain up to 1492. We also, our first film was actually a production of the story of the Prophet Muhammad from the vantage point, from the perspective of American Muslims. Uh, we've also done some more investigative personal stories about a Muslim man after September 11th seeking to fly a plane and it became a sort of comedy uh, where we had to sort of look inside what a devout Muslim family looks and feels like. That was called On a Wing and a Prayer. We also did a film on slavery called Prince Among Slaves, which looked at the spiritual lives of the enslaved Africans from West Africa, uh, with a particular focus on one, one protagonist. So these are stories that seek to dispel stereotypes, that seek to humanize, and that seek to sort of open a window onto a culture that most Americans don't get to see out of. Great. How does your work foster cross-cultural understanding, and why is that important to us today? Cross-cultural standing is so important today. Really, the, the way that we come to understand the other uh, is through visual means, through, through the web, through social media, and through film. These are the ways that most Americans are accessing the experience. For example, when you look at the Islamic experience, most youth are actually understanding their first exposure is actually coming through video games, uh, where they have war games and these various types of things where you have representations of Muslims in online spaces as well. So the media is an incredibly transformative and important venue. We're trying to work within that. And I think um, primarily what we do, in addition to making the films, is use these films as a catalyst to promote interfaith dialogue. So we've worked with hundreds of schools, high schools, colleges, libraries, we've taken these programs around the country, and they become an opportunity not just to watch a film passively, but to actually engage people in a discussion, often with a humanities scholar. Wonderful. Tell us why you wanted to make this film and what it's all about. So the film, Islamic Art, Mirror of the Invisible World, uh, is about a two-year-long production, and it's an incredibly surprising film. What we, what we discovered in making this film was, first of all, most people don't usually conceive of the term Islam and the term art in the same sentence. But what we realized is that if you look at, historically, the Islamic civilization is actually one of a rich artistic tradition, a rich artistic tradition that is in dialogue with Western artistic forms and genres and movements. And so um, we, we really discovered so much. And what really propelled us to make this film, I think, was a desire to portray, I mean, this is something that has never been done. It's really 1,400 years in the making to uh, showcase uh, you know, some of these wonderful uh, artistic accomplishments. The Taj Mahal, uh, the Alhambra in uh, modern day Toledo in Spain. Um, you know, some incredible things. We actually shot this on a red camera, which is a super, super duper powerful camera. And we traveled all around the world, but thankfully we did it in less than a year. Wow. You've screened this film for many audiences. What's the reaction been? The reaction has been very positive. We've screened it at about 30 different venues, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. We screened it at the Dallas Museum of Art, Orlando, major cities nationwide. And the reaction has been very interesting because what we've been able to do is bring 
interfaith audiences into dialogue with arts and cultural audiences. And this is a very new union of two different communities that don't typically start conversations together. So on one hand, folks like librarians, including public programming, were dying to get this film because we would also bring the Muslim American community into their home turf, so to speak. So it created a very interesting conversation. What it also did for Muslims was really reaffirm some pride in their own heritage. Most Muslims don't realize that they actually come from a civilization that produced these works of beauty. So even a lot of Muslim Americans seem to be sort of victims of some of the stereotypes that are out there right now. Um, one of the things we've discovered is that people are still hungry for more dialogue, which is why we're super excited that the Muslim Journeys bookshelf has taken this film on. But do you expect audiences and local libraries will learn from watching the film and participating in the Muslim Journeys Bookshelf program? Many different things. What we've sought to do is not periodize Islamic history. So rather what we've done is we've identified five core themes. The word, ornament, color, space, and water. And we, we found that these motifs are the predominant motifs in all expressions of Islamic art wherever it manifests itself. And so, for example, um, these themes would be expressed when Islam expanded into India and fused with Hindu and Indian styles of art. And the same can be said when it went into Spain and fused with Ju uh, Judaic and Christian. So, we really sought a sort of, what are the key contributions that Islamic art contributed to the field of art? And the one I think most important is the word, the text. For the first time, the text, the word was elevated to a status of artistic perfection that you haven't seen before. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you.